Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming. And I bring you guys my Dark World strategy post, the Dark World structure deck. I feel like this is one of the best structure decks Konami has made in this year alone. And that's saying something, because they printed out some really godly structure decks. The branded structure deck was insane. Uh, the, what's it called? I wouldn't say the Crystal Beast monsters were great, but all the spells they offered were fantastic. Not to mention the Ash reprint and the Ghost Morning reprint. There's just so many like, really, really <laughs> good structure decks this year. It's ridiculous. And uh, this is no example. All the Danger reprints are insane. And I would say of all the structure decks, this is probably the only one where every new card for the strategy is actually improves the deck intensely well. Which is really, really awesome. I'm really happy to say that Dark World's got like eight new cards and all eight cards are very playable in some form or fashion which is insane uh if you don't know dark worlds this deck had its time in the sun a long uh, its time in the sun uh, a long time ago uh it used to be a very powerful meta deck early 2011 maybe earlier than that and uh, it was a really really cool strategy uh basically its whole effects is that uh, when these guys are discarded to a graveyard by you or your opponent they get really, really insanely good effects, and they plus off into infinity. And they haven't really seen relevance until the introduction of Dangers. When Dangers became a deck, uh, this deck did come up a couple times. Uh, I know they're dark. I don't think it was Dark World FTK. I think it was Danger FTK. But uh, this deck definitely got increasingly better with the Dangers, which uh, made this deck even really better. But uh, now as we move on. Uh, this deck has been falling to the wayside with the release of Tier Elements, Blight, Exosister, Flu. There's so many decks that overshadow this deck. But I'm happy to say that the new Dark Worlds and the new Fusion Monster especially puts Dark Worlds on a map. I never thought they would get a Fusion. Personally, I always thought they were an XYZ spam deck. So the fact that they gave them a Fusion is interesting as hell. I gotta admit, the Fusion's insanely good. Now they just need to give us another Fusion. This deck is set to the races but uh let's just go straight into this first things first we have grapha dark lord of the well dark dragon lord of the dark world even though he's a fiend monster this guy is insanely good dark worlds has some of the best art in Yu-Gi-Oh. no joke i know i said that about a lot of archetypes but if you want like demonic uh really really like beautiful art the dark worlds are way to go same thing with burning abyss uh their artworks are just amazing uh, Burning Abyss is definitely more devilish, but uh, these are definitely more like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. So I guess this is devilish too in its own way, but it's more like metallic devilish. But uh, Grapha is a really, really amazing card. Uh, one for one thing, it special himself from uh, the graveyard by returning one Dark World monster on your field to the hand, which is insanely good. And then it discards, discards the graveyard by card effect. You can target one of your Opponent's cards, destroy it. And if this card was discarded by your opponent's card, uh, then you have the effect where you look at one uh, look at one random card in their hand. And if you do, if it's a monster, special summon it onto your side of the field. Which is really, really great. This card is just advantage, advantage, advantage. And is a must of 3 of for the strategy. This deck is just really, really impossibly good. And you must play them at 3. It's kind of like Blue Eyes. You just have to play them at 3. Now, don't get me wrong, I've seen some lists cut them down to two, but uh, personally, three is the way to go. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, let's go straight into the newest guy, Overking of the Dark Worlds. Overking is the newest retrain of Graph over there, and uh, this guy is insanely good. Uh, Overking of the Dark Worlds is a really, really amazing monster where you can spend some of this card from your hand by returning one level seven or lower Dark World monster you control to the hand. Which is really, really good. So he has the same effect as Grapha. Which is great because Grapha is also a level 8. Which this guy is 2. Meaning you can m much easier make rank 8s now. Which is fantastic. Before he had to rely on the dangers plus Grapha. Now you don't have to anymore. Now this guy's also a level 8. And he's a free extension. Not to mention, I should mention this. There's not really hard once returns on any of these cards. So, you, if you can discard multiple Graphas, and you can special summon multiple Graphas too. Same thing goes with this guy. Uh, he does not have a once returning special summon this guy. He just says you can special summon this guy 
by returning one level 7 or dark world monster you control from your hand to grave. Which is insanely good. So you can ultimately help you just keep making rank 8s by detaching materials. Which is really, really insane. And overall, a fantastic card. And then, of course, he also has the fetch where if this card is discarded by card effect, you could add one level 5 or higher dark world monster from your deck to hand. So it basically says he searches Grapha. And then he also has the effect, or Silva, I guess he does search Silva. And then if this card is discarded by your opponent's card effect, you can special summon one level 4 or lower dark world monster from your deck or grave, which is always going to be from deck. But uh, this card is just insanely good for the strategy and is a must of 3 of for the deck. Another must of 3 of is Snow, the Unlight of the Dark World. Uh, this card, not gonna lie, reading it a couple times, it threw me off on what exactly its wording was, but I understand it now. So Snow has one of those like trouble card text it always has, and uh, basically what it says is that it discards discards the graveyard by card effect. If your opponent discards this card to the graveyard by card effect, uh, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, um, and add one dark world monster from your deck to hand, and then special summon the targeted monster in defense position. Which is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, I don't know why you just said this card is discarded you get to do that. Uh, the fact that they said it had to be from your opponent and it had to be from this is a little strange. But overall, it's a really, really powerful card. as another must of three of in the deck. Must of three of indeed. Uh, the next three of, mandatory, is the newest one. Uh, Gateman of the Dark World. Gateman is a fantastic monster. This card is insanely good. Uh, this card has a non one to turn effect. Discard him, add your field spell to deck to hand to gate the Dark World. Then he has the effect where this card is banished. Now, this is the once per turn effect. You can just add a special summon him onto the field. And guess what? Gates of the Dark World is a, no is a non once per turn banish a Dark World engrave to search a Dark World. So the fact that he just banishes himself. Oh, fun, he searches the field spell. The field spell can then uh, banish him. He'll get special summoned and he get a search. Really, really insane card, and overall just great for the strategy. Not to mention, he is a level 4 dark, so he's just really, really good for alert targets as well. Helps you go into Abyss Dweller and a whole bunch of rank 4s. Now it's time to go into the uh, level, well, not the level 2s, but just the 2 of in the deck. We're playing 2 Silva Dark Lord. Now, you don't have to use to play Silva. Silva used to be a bad card, but uh, now we definitely have to play it because Silva is insane in this deck. If this card is discarded to Graveyard by card effect, special summon this card. Then if this card is discarded from your hand to Graveyard by opponent's card effect, look, uh, look at, uh, you don't get a look at your opponent's hand. Your opponent places exactly two cards from their hand on the bottom of the deck in any order. Basically, this card just says, hey, uh, this guy gets, uh, he puts two in your bottom of your opponent's hand, which is insanely good. And guess what? We can force our opponent to do that now with the new cards we have. So we can really, really hand loop our opponent. And uh, speaking of cards that make our opponent loop cards, uh, let's talk about the gold Dark World. This card used to be a non-play of card, but uh, this card is insanely good now. So if this card is discards to graveyard, you can special summon it to this card to your opponent's field. If this card is special summon to your opponent's field, your opponent discards one card. You're probably wondering, what the fuck does that even mean? Well, basically, this card says, hey, you can special summon this card onto your opponent's field, and then it gives you an effect where you discard a card. So, technically, it is a minus one, but because we're forcing out the uh, effect, all the Dark Worlds trigger their better effects. So, they all have better effects when they're discarded by your opponent's card. Like I said, he special summons any Dark Worlds from deck. He allows you to look at your opponent's hand. Uh, he allows you to put two cards of your opponent's hand back into deck. It is a really, really powerful card. So, this guy is essential for the archetype and really, really just great in general. Uh, he doesn't really help you extend. He just helps you loop your opponent's hand, which is never something I thought you would play in Dark Worlds. And, of course, you do also play two Huntsmen of the Dark World, or Brow, if you want to call him that. This guy is also insane. He's our last Dark World we were playing. Uh, this card is discarded to the graveyard by card effect. Draw one card. Plus another card, this card is this card for the graveyard by your opponent's card effect. So, if you use his effect to discard him, it's a draw two. Really, really insane card. And overall, just fantastic. Alright, so that is it for our Dark World monsters. Now it's time to go over our Danger monsters. Which, to be honest, Dark Worlds and Dangers 
are like two peas in a pod. They work too well together. You have to play them together. They're in too synergistic. They're almost like the same archetype. Uh, if they just printed Dark World art on these cards, I would honestly believe they're Dark World monsters. No joke. Uh, they're just really, really insanely good. So let's just go over these guys. So first things first, we've got the big, foot, the big man himself. Uh, this guy is a three of in a deck. Must have. Really, really powerful monster. Yes, I do have the gold rarity. Uh, sad to say, but I have one normal rarity. But uh, this guy is insanely good. You can reel this card in your hand. Your opponent randomly choose, uh, chooses one card from your hand. Usually, it's the side for dice roll. I mean, whenever they hit, they discard that card. Uh, if you did not hit the Bigfoot or any of the danger monsters, uh, you get to special summon one, which is insane. So, let's say you activate Bigfoot, reveal him. Uh, your opponent hits a random other card. Great. This guy gets special summon, and then you draw one. So, he makes up for the advantage, and he's a body on board, which is insanely good because he is his free rank 8 fodder. And really, really powerful himself. Now, if he's this is hit, let's say uh, your opponent snipes the Bigfoot. Well, Bigfoot then pops the card in your opponent's field. So going second, this deck can easily pop cards. Not to mention uh, cards like Trade In. You can trade in a Bigfoot and a Graffa, and they'll both just pop cards on your field, which is uh, on your opponent's field, which is insanely good. So going second, you have plays, which is pretty, pretty swell. We're also playing to the Thunderbird. Thunderbird is another amazing card. Where basically, if you can reel this card from your hand, of course, your opponent randomly chooses one. And then if he is not chosen, he gets to spend some of himself. He's another level eight. And if he is chosen, uh, you do just get to target one set card your opponent controls and destroy it. Which is also pretty, pretty solid. So he goes after the back row, which is really, really good. This deck does have trouble against trap decks, but what combo deck doesn't? And, um... Floodgates are a floodgate, and this deck can even play them sometimes, but we'll just keep going. Thunderbird's a really, really good card, but you don't want to see multiples just due to the fact that its effect isn't the greatest about popping back row. Not to mention, it is a little smaller, and you just don't want to hit too many of them. Uh, next, for our last level 8, we are playing the one Ogopogo. Really, really good card. Uh, again, if he's not hit, he's just a free level 8 material. And he's a free special summon with 3,000 defense. If he is hit, he does foolish burial any danger monster, which you think might be bad. But we have ways to specially summoning out danger monsters from the grave. So that isn't the worst in the world. And overall, he's a really, really good guy in general. Uh, and that is it for our level 8s. Now it's time to go over our level 7s, which is just Nessie. Nessie is just a fantastic card. Really, really great. If he was a level 8, we'll be cooking with fire in his deck. But we, we already are with the dark worlds but hey this guy is just insane uh you reveal this card of course if he's not hit he gets special summon and you draw one and this guy is hit then basically you get to uh add one danger monster from your deck to your hand which is pretty pretty insane so it's like okay i missed but don't worry i'll add you back what you missed so it works out in the end so they're always never really a minus an advantage unless if you hit a bigfoot or a thunderbird there's nothing to hit, so that's a minus. But if you do hit a Nessie, you'll always get advantage. If you don't hit a Nessie, you'll always get advantage. So that's pretty, pretty solid. We're also playing the one uh, uh, Chewbacca, I like to call him, but it's just uh, Chupacabra. Uh, this guy is also really, really good. Basically, if he doesn't get hit, uh, he's this free level 4 dark to get special summon. If he does get hit, he reborns a dark from grave. Well, he reborns a danger from grave, which is pretty, pretty solid. And overall, a really, really good card. And finally, we are also playing two Mothman because Mothman is also a fantastic card. We don't want to play three because you don't want to hit Mothman. Uh, Mothman is really, really good, even if you do hit him. The only issue is that Tier Elements is a Tier 0 format. And if you hit with Mothman, his effect is you both both players draw and then disc uh, discard one card and draw one. Which is not really good when your opponent can activate a Tier Element because of this. Or they can discard it and seize you card and it seize you card triggers. Honestly, Mothman's a really, really high rolly card. But since all our cards just get so much advantage off him, we have to play him. Not to mention, he's just a free level 4 extender. You gotta play him. He's just really, really solid. And he's a dark. Uh, we're also playing the one Jackalope. Uh, Jackalope's also insanely good in his deck. Uh, why wouldn't you play this card? If you play him at more, you would play it at more. But uh, you reveal this card in your hand, of course. If he doesn't get hit, he gets special summoned, and you draw one. And then if he is hit, 
Um, you could spend some one danger monster from your deck and defense position. So he's still a free material no matter what. He's still always putting a body on board. He may not be drawing you a card, but he's always spending something on body. Especially if he spends something one of the level eights. Uh, he's just a free link eight. And if he spends something one of the level fours, you get a free material for level four, which is pretty, pretty insane. We're also playing the one uh, Susanoko. Sukunoko is also really, really good in his deck. Uh, basically, this card's always playing itself as a body. And this card is discarded, you get to special summon it. And this card is not special summoned by its... Uh, if you don't hit this card, it special summons itself and draws one. So he's always going to put himself as a body. He's just free link material. Really, really good card in general. And that is it for our monsters. There's a shit ton, as you can see. And uh, we'll just keep going with these spells and traps. Uh, next, we play three, Drag Down to the Grave. Now, this card is a little bit uh, controversial. Just because it is technically a minus one. Oh, uh, well, it's not really a minus one. It's kind of an equaling of advantage. But uh, the reason why I like Drag Down to the Grave in his deck is because basically both players reveal their hand. And then your opponent gets to discard one. Uh, both players get to discard one random card from your opponent's hand. Well, if you noticed, the dangers all float. So you have a handful of dangers that have to be dragged down. You can discard the most important cards that don't float, get whole hand in Volage, and basically just get a free floater, which is insane. This card is insanely good and a must of three of in a deck. So personally, Drag Down has always been a great card. Yes, they do get to recoup the advantage whenever you discard it, but I'd rather them draw one random card if I discard their Pedimento, uh their field spells, or they're just a really, really, or starter. There's so many really good discards that this card can just rip out of your opponent's hand. Maybe they have Nibiru in hand, let's just rip the Nibiru out of their hand. Really, really solid card in general, and it's a must of three of a deck. Not to mention, Hand of Knowledge is always great. Play three Allure of Darkness. Allure of Darkness is also an insanely good card. Basically allows you just to draw two every time. Fantastic. Why wouldn't you play this card? Insanely, insanely good. We're also playing Gates of the Dark World. Gates of the Dark World is a two of in a deck. I've seen some people put it to three. But I feel like this drawing to make gates sucks. It is a soft one for turn, so... You can activate a copy and then activate another copy, which is insane. But I feel like you just don't want to see multiple copies in hand. Because not only does it turn off this guy, but I don't know. It just isn't the greatest. You want a whole hand of these guys, mostly monsters in his deck. You don't want to see a whole bunch of spells. Um, you're also playing the new fusion card, Dark World Ascension. This card is literally a custom card, if I ever read one. Uh, this During your main phase, you just fuse something one fiend monster from your extra deck. I banish your materials that mention it from your field or graveyard. And if this card is future summoned with Dark World Monsters this way, you can also discard monsters as material during the main phase. If this card is in your graveyard, you can add cards from your hand or and then discard one danger Dark World from monster. You can only use this effect once a turn. So you're probably wondering what the fuck I just read. Well, basically it has two effects. Well, technically three effects. First effect is you can fuse summon two ways. First way is that you can banish the materials from grave. Second effect, you can discard dark worlds from your hand in order to fusion summon. You hear me right. You can discard dark worlds from hand to fusion summon. This card is just a discard too, which is insanely good for the archetype. And overall, just really, really good. And you don't have to play multiple copies, and you don't have to worry about it. You can set the graveyard off a danger. Because this card comes back onto the field by just discarding a Dark World from hand. Really, really insanely good card. Overall, great card. Must have two open a deck. And finally, for our last two spells, we are playing the one Puppetry, which is a quick play. Uh, target three cards in any graveyard and banish them by discarding one Fiend Monster. Which is just insane value there. Because you go against Tier Elements, they trigger out their Tier Element effects. You just say, no, bitch, I'm uh, banishing them. Now, of course, they might have... Uh, responses in the form of a you card, but hey, at least you're forcing them out, you're forcing them to use their activations, which isn't bad themselves. It also has the effect where you can target one of your banished fiend monsters, add it to hand, by banishing this card from grave, which is not bad at all. Overall, a great card in general. And then, of course, the one Dark World Archives. This is another new card we just got. Uh, this card's also insanely good. During the main phase, you can discard one Dark World monster if you do. Uh, Dark World monsters you currently control gain attack equal to the level of the discarded monster from your hand until the end of the turn. 
which is uh, insanely good. So you have a whole field of Dark Worlds, this card at level 8, and then now they just gain uh, 800, which is pretty, pretty solid. And then if a monster whose original type is Fiend is discarded from your hand by, by the effect of a Dark World monster, hint, hint, all these guys do that, well then, basically, you get to draw two, discard one. Insanely, insanely great advantage of this card. This card's an advantage machine. A really, really great card. I wish it didn't have the once per turn effect, because if it didn't, we would be popping this card off like hotcakes. This deck's only issue, honestly, when it comes to hand traps, like Ash is not enough in this deck. You gotta droll your opponent. This is another one of those archetypes that loses hard to droll. But again and again, when you're making like, going through half your deck by just drawing cards and discarding cards, it happens. Now, you notice I don't have trading. I didn't mention that card. Trading is a good alternative because we are playing, uh, I think it's 12 level eights in the deck. We're playing three, six, nine, uh, 12. So we are playing 12 level eights. So you can go the whole blue eyes route and play trade in. But personally, I just felt like I kept bricking with it. I kept opening up to like the level fours or the level sevens. And I would trade in and did not get much value out of it. So it's up to you. Maybe trading could be number two of in a deck, but this is just a simple 40 card deck, maybe 41 cards. I might be mistaken on the number I have here, but all right, so basically. now it's time to go over the extra deck. And I feel like this extra deck is insanely good. So first things first, we are playing a new fusion monster, which is Grafa Dragon Overload of the Dark World. This card is some of the most insane art in Yu-Gi-Oh. This guy is a behemoth of a card. And honestly, I can see this card getting splashed in multiple different decks because his material is very generic. He only requires one Grafa and one Dark Monster, meaning King of the Swamp plus any Dark equals this card. Meaning you might be seeing some Tier Element players, hint, hint, next video, playing this card. This card is insanely, insanely good. And uh, I honestly won't be surprised if you see some competitive play outside of Dark Worlds. This card is insanely good. So you don't know what it does. Is that it's one, he's a 3200 beat stick, and then he has a quick effect during either player's turn when your opponent activates a normal spell, trap, or monster effect. Quick effect, you change his effect to your opponent discards one card. And you're probably thinking, well, wait, that's a minus one. You're making your opponent discard one card. Well, it make, uh, it's making you discard one card. Well, if you're playing a deck like Dark World, it's technically making your opponent discard a card. And if you have like a silver hand, that's hand ripping them for two. Which is pretty, pretty insane. So, uh, this guy being a, a quick effect, this Omni Negate is pretty, pretty insane. He only negates normal spells, though. That's a funny thing. It says normal spells are traps. So, he does not qu negate quick play spells. I actually learned that on the hard way. I went against uh, Richie, who's a Raid Raptor player. I almost lost to him. And uh, he had two rank up magics. I tried to negate both of them. And he couldn't because... It's a quick play, and uh, he can't negate quick plays, which is I thought was kind of funny. But um, he is still just a nominee gate for normal spells, normal traps, and monsters. Really, really insane card here. Uh, of course, we have to play the Zeus. This is a really XYZ based deck. Uh, the one Zombie Stein, because Zombie Stein's insane in this archetype. Any level 8 deck should probably consider playing this dude. Uh, this guy basically says, must be XYZ summon. It wants to turn quick effect. Detach one material from his card, send one card from your hand to grave, target one card your opponent controls, change his defense position if you do negate effects. Not only does it just negate effects, quick effect, you discard one monster uh, discard one card from your hand. Guess what? All your shit likes to be discarded from hand. So you just get more advantage. This card is insanely good for a strategy. Imagine making this guy discarding a danger, danger effect, pop a card. Really, really insane. Imagine danger, uh, pitching uh, any card, honestly. This card is just a really, really insane monster, and it's a must-up for a deck. We're also playing one Orcus, the Evening Star. This guy is another great card for the archetype. Uh, this guy is just straight up, hey, I'm going to protect your dudes. Hey, I'm going to shuffle back a guy. Hey, I'm a 2600 beat stick. That's just really, really easy to make. Really, really good card. It just sends one card. Your opponent controls the grave. Non-targeting. Insanely good. Great removal. Talk about removal. Uh, let's OTK our person. We are playing the Drew Gooblion package. Of course, Hope Harbinger 
and of course number 100 because we want to hit our opponent really really hard and just one shot them for game really easy to do in this deck we're also playing the one abyss dweller and the one babuska for uh basically uh plan b options not to mention abyss dweller is a one-sided uh no graveyard against tier elements which is game over for them really really great deck now it's time to go over to Lynx. We're playing one Underworld Goddess. I feel like you have to play this card just for the theming alone. She is an Underworld card. Not to mention, uh, she has a free out two towers monsters, which would have helped me a lot yesterday when against running against Ray Raptors. No joke. He made two Ultimate Falcons plus uh, freaking uh, what's that one guy? Um, the DDD um, that just locks you out of the game. Kai King Genghis. Uh, whatever his name is, he just locked you out of the game, um, which is pretty insane. I also play the one Burl of uh, Sword Dragon. He probably could switch this out for a Appaloosa or a uh, Axis Code, but I felt like Burl of Savage does well, not Burl of Savage, a uh, Burl of Sword Dragon doesn't get as much credit as the other ones do. This card kind of fell off because Axis Code kind of does this card better because it gets up to 53 and it just pops multiple cards. And again, in Cyber's deck, he attacks twice, which is insane. This card attacks twice, also gains the attack. Uh, I, again, you probably could play Appaloosa in this deck, but I like just playing the Unicorn, the Phoenix, and an IP Masquerina to go into these cards. Uh, you could play Appaloosa. I highly recommend it if you want. You can switch this out for an Appaloosa, but I just want to hit my opponent really, really hard even more. This is definitely an aggro deck, in my opinion. And if you really, really want to go aggro, you can play Mooga Mooga Beatdown and just play their three copies of Skill Drain that you came out in the structure deck and really stop your opponent from playing. But uh, that's it for this deck. Hope you all enjoy. Take care. Don't do anything stupid. And see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>